Good morning, guys. Hope you are fine. We have either already given UPSC optional geography paper, or you have noticed. So here, I am going to discuss the question that have been asked in geography optional paper number two. Okay. We have already discussed the paper number one. As we noticed uh, so many things that we have already discussed within the class, already given some of the questions and Yojana IS. All such questions we noticed within actual UPSC question paper. So, without any delay, let us proceed with geography optional. paper number 2. Here as you already know the total marks of this paper, the total marks of this paper are 250. Okay. In which question number 1 and question number 5 both are compulsory each and every question carry 50 marks, each and every question carry equal marks that are 50 marks. Rest out of question number 2, 3, 4, you can pick up either 1 or either 2, else after question number 5, question number 6, 7, 8, you can pick up any 1 or 2 question. It depends on your discretion. Once you pick up selected any question, then you need to attend all the part of this question. Okay. Yes, if you are interested in giving test, you may give test. Otherwise, here I am discussing geography optional paper number two. It depends on your discretion. Test is already available. Okay. From ma'am, you can collect. So, anything, if you are interested in taking the class, you can take. Otherwise, you can attempt test. Whatever you think suitable. Okay. It is on your discretion. So, here, in the first question, we need to attempt, we need to write at least 30 words, around 30 words up to max. Okay. For each and every location and in the given map, we have to, we have to identify those locations. Okay. If uh, you feel disturbance, you may also sit outside as you think better. Otherwise, you can remain here if there is no disturbance. Okay. So, this Tarangam body, I hope the student of Tamil Nadu receive two marks extra by attempting this location. So, this location is in Tamil Nadu, in Maila Dothrai, Tamil Nadu district. So, it is also a tourist place. Okay. So, you, if you know the course of this uh, Kaveri river or its tributary, then you can easily mark this location. Further, there are some tourist destination or location you can visit also over there, just like Dennis Fort, New Jerusalem, okay, Tharangambadi Beach, etc. Are these locations familiar to you? No? Okay. Now, second is Mahi. Mahi, I hope if you have general awareness about uh, Pondicherry. So, Pondicherry consists Mahi, Yanam, Karikal, all these. So, Mahi is existed in Kerala, but 
it is administered by Pondicherry. Okay, it is one of the unit of Pondicherry. So Mahi, it is a part of Pondicherry, or it is a French French colony. So French started to settle in Mahi. And there was also fight between French as well as Britishers over this Mahi. So, it, uh, it lies on Naluthara river along the Arabian Sea and Calicut district. This town captured by the French from the British. In 1726, after that it joined India in 1954, okay. So, any 2-3 line around 30 words you can write easily over here. Then Bomdila, Bomdila is also a tourist destination in Northeast India, especially in the state of Arunachal Pradesh. So, if you will visit over there, Bomdila is good place for the tourist activities. It is located in Kameng district in the state of Arunachal Pradesh in India. It is known for its scenic beauty along the Buddhist monastery. Along the Buddhist monastery, it is located in the scenic. Uh, it is known for its scenic beauty. Weather of Bomdila is fine, alpine. So, during medieval time period, it was generally ruled by Bhutan, the tribes from the Bhutan. Then, around 1873, Bittis left it. Left it on the discretion of uh, some of the tribes that were ruling from the Bhutan. Okay. So, British did not interfere in the administration and the governance of this Bomdila region. Since independence, it remained cause of disagreement between India as well as China. China claimed all this part of Arunachal Pradesh or Bomdila belongs to it, while India recognized Man McMahon line as the official boundary between India and China. But that is not acceptable to China. Further, in 2017, you have noticed Dola Sadia Bridge. Dola Sadia Bridge. So, this Dola Sadia Bridge was inaugurated by Modi, Prime Minister Modi ji, in 2017. It is the only connectivity between Assam and Arunachal Pradesh. Dola and Sadhya both are the villages located in Arunachal Pradesh. Okay, so Dola Sadhya Bres or to give honor to Bhupen Hazarika, it is also called as Bhupen Hazarika Bres, Beam Bres, connecting northeastern state of Assam as well as the Arunachal Pradesh. Okay, the Bres is first permanent road connection between Assam and Arunachal Pradesh. The bridge span over the Lohit river, the tributary of Brahmaputra connecting Vilesh, Dhola as well as Sadia. Okay, and Tinsukia district of Assam. They both are located within Tinsukia district of Assam. And uh, nearby this Dhola, we have uh, nearby this Sadia, we have accessibility to reach, to enter into the Arunachal Pradesh. Then your next location is Tal Kaviri. So, Tal Kaviri is an origin place of Kaviri River. As you already know, 
about Tal Kaveri River, <coughs> uh, about this place Kaveri River, that it originated from Brahmagiri Hill in Karnataka. Okay, so if you know about the Kaveri River, its origin point, etc., so you can attempt this location. It is place generally considered to be source of river Kaveri in Brahmagiri Hills in Karnataka. Okay, it is considered as a sacred place, as a holy place, and several tourists come here to spend holiday to enjoy scenic beauty that existed within Tal Kaveri. So, people generally belongs to Hindu religion, they believe that holy dip and Tal Kaveri make them pure. Then Satkosiya, Satkosiya it might be possible you may listen about the wildlife sanctuary or about the tiger reserve. Okay, so if you know that it is existed in Odisha, okay, so you can write about it. You can connect with Mahadadi that Satkosia is spread along magnificent gods or Satkosia, Satkosia gods, okay, created by Mahanadi in Odisha. Because this region consists lot of biodiversity, to recognize, to protect its biodiversity, government of India declared it wildlife century is 1976. Further, to protect its uh, ecosystem as well as to give recognition to tigers, Satkosia tigers, government of India in 2007 declared it as the tiger reserve, as the tiger reserve. So, it comprising adjoining two wildlife sanctuary, Satkosia, God sanctuary and Basipalli sanctuary. So, you may write about uh, Satkosia, Basipalli or Satkosia tiger reserve, either about the wildlife sanctuary tiger reserve or a god that is created by Mahanadi river and Odisha, you may write around 30 words. Dhola Veera, Dhola Veera, I hope if uh, you study the Harappan side, then out of five, one of the largest site of Harappan culture is Dhola Veera. Dhola Veera, it is existed in the state of Gujarat in the region of run of Kutch or district Kutch. So, this Dola Veera is an archaeological site in Kutch district and Gujarat and Dola Veera location is on Tropic of Cancer. Around you already know that Gujarat, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Tropic of Cancer is passing through all these states. So, around Kutch, Tropic of Cancer is also passing and very near to Kutch, this Dola Veera is located. We have found several artifacts related to different uh, uh, tools, uh, related to different uh, Harappan remains in this region. Okay. So, site contains ruins of ancient valley civilization, but this was hugely impacted, affected by frequent earthquake and very major earthquake, very high intensity more than 7 at register scale we noticed around 2600 BC. Okay. So, it was named as UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2021. That may be one of the region why UPSC asked this location to you. It was declared as World Heritage Site in 2021. Now further, Sonamar. The Sonamar is hill station in Jammu and Kashmir. It is also the tourist palace. 
or if you are going for Amarnath cave yatra, then you need to visit this this region, Sonamar station. Further, it provides connectivity with several passes, several lakes in this region. So, all these lakes which are connected with this Sonamarg region and Sonamarg is base of undertaking Yatra of Amarnath cave. Okay. So, generally lot of, uh, lot of people from Hindu religion who visited Amarnath Yatra, then they stay at this hill estate. Meluka Atoll, you may not know about Meluka, but you know about the Atoll. If you have already studied within the geography about the coral reefs, about the polyps, coral polyps, about the barrier reefs, about the development of Atoll. So, Atoll, if you will find that uh, Atoll is only existed within Lachadip at the island of Lachadip, except Lachadip, we are not finding anywhere in India at all. So, suppose that if you do not know about uh, Meliku, then you know about formation of atoll. How atoll are formed? When island gets submerged under the water, it leaves a ring, a circle over, over its submersion point. Okay. Then here, coral polyps started to develop some reef and that we called as coral atoll. Okay. So, it is uninhabited Lachadip island located in Miniko reef and it is a fringe with gravel and covered with bushes and sometimes coconut tree you will also notice over there in region of Kerala, in Lachadip, in Andaman, Nicobar, etc. So, these are quite common in nature. Then Ganga Sagar. For Ganga Sagar, there is a very popular quote. There is a very popular quote, Savtiras Bar Bar Ganga Sagar Ek Bar. So, this quote is due to its popularity or due to its more and more promotion, especially in 24 Pargana district of West Bengal. 24 Pargana district of West Bengal, this Ganga Sagar is uh, the second largest fair after the Kumbh Mela, after the Kumbh Fair that is celebrated after each and every 12 year at uh, Sangam of Ganga, Yamuna and Saraswati. Okay, but at present Ganga and Yamuna in Allahabad or Prayagraj. So, Ganga Sagar Fair is second biggest congregation of Hindu pilgrim after Kumbh Mela. So, several pilgrims not only from India, from different state of India, but also from different other neighbor countries like Nepal, Thailand, West Indies, Canada, Japan, Australia. Okay, they come for a holy dip in the conference of Ganga Sagar. So, I hope all the location asked and question number 1 are clear to you. Now, you can mark in this given map all these locations as we discussed. So, this second question or generally most of the second paper of geography is not uh, associated with typical geography rather more associated with common general news. Okay. Generally, most of the student have good familiarity with all these topics uh, and all such problem associated with the population, associated with the country, with geographical extension, with climate, etc, etc. All such things which are generally common in nature, we study within this paper number 2. So, this question is, why extreme particulate pollution remained festering issue in Delhi NCR region? In Delhi NCR region, why this 
festering. Festering means something which create infection. Okay. Which create little bit wound, which create infection, allergy due to dust particle, due to the pollution. And particle pollution means the tiny particles generally here, particle pollution indicating PM 2.5 or PM 10. Okay, PM 2.5 or PM 10 particles. So these particles, these particulates matter are hazardous for the health. Okay, so particular pollution, particle pollution which is also called as particle matter that are, that are rich in environment of Delhi, NCR, etc. in this region which are creating lot of problem and these particles may include dust, these particles may include dirt okay suits suits are those particles means the carbon deposition the floating carbon in the air after burning uh, fuels after burning some coal wood etc okay smoke you already know and drops of the liquid as well so they are all comes under particle pollution so particle pollution is generating from different kind of sources, wood stove, forest fire, factories, car, trucks, etc. It is generating from several different resources. To prevent such problem, Delhi government also initiated or put the fine over stable burning in NCR region. Ishtable burning in Haryana in Punjab has been declared as illegal. Now government is also providing alternative solution to it that uh, farmer may ask, may call to the government service provider. They can spread biodegradable chemicals and within very short span of time, maybe one week, two week, the stable can be degraded, can be degraded with the help of chemical reaction. Okay. So, breathing in particle pollution can be harmful to the young health. Bigger particle PM10 generally created irritation in your eyes, nose, throat, etc. Okay. Generally, we notice during the time period of Deepavali, during the time period of uh, after harvesting of this paddy crop. People in Delhi realize generally the old or very young generation, irritation in the eyes, throat and some kind of problem related to the breathing arise due to increment in the PM10 particles. Okay. Fine smaller particles even are more dangerous than PM10 particles. PM10 particles you may feel but sometimes PM 2.5 particles you may not feel. Okay, so fine or smaller particles called PM 2.5 are more dangerous because they can get into deep part of your lungs and even they can mix into your blood. They can mix into your blood. So this may create infection in your lungs, in your inner body parts. So, these particulate matter are becoming more severe health hazard in NCR region due to increment of PM 2.5 and PM 10 particles. Now, how do phys physiography and climate of India explain the biological diversity of the country? You need to explain how. How do physiography and climate of India explain the biological diversity of the country? So, physiography and claim, climate, how they are connected with huge biodiversity in India. If you notice Himalayan region, Western Ghat, Eastern Ghat, Northeastern region, then coastal region, maybe island region, then lot of biodiversity we notice over there. 
and this biodiversity not only cause of physiography factor but they are also called as because of different climatic zone that existed in india so india possess a distinct identity not only because of its geography history culture but also because of great diversity of natural ecosystem because of great diversity of natural ecosystem indian biological diversity is much more wider it comes under 12 mega biodiversity hotspot hotspot in the world okay so biodiversity in its forest wetland marine water resources is very rich due to physiography as well as due to different climate that existed in india great himalayan region peculiar identity of biological diversity okay so such kind of flora fauna you may not exist uh, you may not notice in other plain areas further various cause responsible for shrinking glaciers rapid melting of uh, some glaciers okay due to change in the climate further due to different different climate that existed at peninsular india in northern india northeastern india at coastal region it led to creation of different biodiversity in india variation in the temperature variation in the rainfall variation in uh, weather condition at different point of time variation in your monsoon type of the climate that create that generate lot of biodiversity in india so physiography as well as the climate of india from tropical evergreen to uh, temperate to frigid okay all such climatic zone existed within india that's why it has huge biodiversity now question 1 first d is about process of desertification lead to soil desiccation and soil loss soil desiccation means here dryness of the soil dryness of soil so how desertification is leading to dryness of the soil and degradation of the soil so here you can define little bit about the soil topmost layer of the earth that support life okay comprises countless countless species created dynamic complex ecosystem which are rich in nature half of the top soil on the planet has been degraded has been lost during last 150 year during last more than one century in addition to it erosion soil quality is affected by other agriculture factors it include compaction loss of soil structure nutrient degradation of salinity in the soil etc etc okay then you can define desertification when aridness is increasing due to cut in the forest due to rapid change in the temperature increment in the temperature due to reduction in the rainfall okay so we can prevent we can prevent soil loss we can prevent dryness of the soil by not removing the existed natural vegetation over that land or by reducing other different human activities we can do that so activities such as agriculture such as pastoralism okay means grazing your herd etc deforestation dry land often cause pre disturbance ecosystem over threshold alternative stable states and resistance for the future disturbances 
Now, next question is about critically examine the factors affecting unpredictability of southwest monsoon system in India. It is a huge challenge for Indian Meteorological Department. Indian Meteorological Department each and every time unable to precisely calculate the prediction, the forecasting of uh, monsoon in advance. And it is leading to lot of problem in India. We delay the rehabilitation or prevention evacuation program uh, regarding any natural calamities. Okay. Further, we are unable to predict because of unpredictability of monsoon, it also impacted agriculture sector and different other allied activities. So, increasing unpredictability in recent time, they are more associated with the climate change, but not only the climate change, monsoon depend on the several factors which are responsible for for unpredictability of this monsoon. So, monsoon increasing unpredictability cause of concern. Uh, except uh, UP, Bihar, except uh, some of uh, periphery region, maybe around uh, Punjab, Rajasthan, etc. Rest other India this year has received more rainfall than as usually it received during different years. Okay. So, what is the reason why we are noticing some, such intensive rainfall? One of the factor may be the climate change, but there are several other factors. Because of them, there is increment in the unpredictability of the monsoon. Now, you need to identify some of the factors on which monsoon is depend, which is outside the scope which is outside the estimation or calculation of IMD department or human efforts. Monsoon depend on various factors such as difference between temperature, pressure, mainland, trade wind, Al Nilo, La Lina, Indian Ocean Dipole, all we have studied within the geography related to the monsoon. Okay. So, all these factors are not in the limit, in the capacity of human being. That is why monsoon remain most of the time beyond the scope of control of IMD department. That is why we fail lot of time in predicting monsoon precisely. Then question number 2b, the peninsular location of India provide scope for harnessing non-conventional energy resources. You need to discuss with relevant example, how peninsular of peninsular India providing scope of harven, harnessing non-conventional energy. Non-conventional energy or renewable energy means they are wasting in the consumption, but their production is continuous in nature, permanent in nature. You can produce again and again after their exhaustion, after their consumption. So, you notice southern India is uh, more supportive for generating the renewable energy. You have noticed lot of solar power except world largest solar park that existed within Rajasthan, Jodhpur, okay, Badla solar park. Otherwise, most of the solar park are existed within southern India and the southern tip because of less of lack of barrier, because of permanent flowing of wind, etc. Very much suitable for development of the wind energy. Further, geothermal energy, tidal energy, etc. means with respect to ocean whatever energy we can produce, all such energy is more suitable to peninsular India, to southern India rather than northern India. Okay. So, in this question, you need to define all solar energy, wind energy, bio energy, hydro energy, energy from the waste okay. or ocean energy may be through the mechanical or maybe by trapping heat over the surface temperature of the ocean. Okay. 
So, in that way we can generate more and more energy, renewable energy that is not uh, possible, feasible or that is that is not incomparable to northern India. Okay. So, here source of energy which are exhaustible being produced continuously in nature are called non-conventional energy or renewable sources. Some of these sources you can define all these sources here. Okay. Then if you draw a diagram it may be good otherwise you may leave, you may escape. Okay. So, this diagram is showing you that most of the renewable energy is located in peninsular India and southern India rather than northern India. Okay. So, except this Badla solar park, the world largest solar park. located in Jaipur or Jodhpur or in the periphery region, okay. Riva solar project, then all other these projects as well as uh, you know the wind park, they are located more in southern India rather than northern India. Plus geothermal energy, tidal energy, it is the peninsular India. In northern India, we can can't produce the tidal energy. Further, through this graph, you may you may notice about renewable energy the percentage of share, you know, of southern India as well as the northern India. So, means with respect to solar energy, with respect to wind energy, geothermal energy, bio energy tidal energy, okay. All such energy you need to define precisely, you need to connect with peninsular India. And you may give some of the example as mentioned within the figure. Now, another problem we are put facing related to groundwater contamination, permanent, continuous, more and more groundwater contamination that we are noticing among different states, okay. So, based on that groundwater contamination in fast expanding urban areas, urban landscape of India appears to have become a major public health issue. How this groundwater contamination is leading to public health issues? What are the impact of this groundwater contamination over the public health? Now, groundwater contamination you can define when man made product may be gasoline, may be oil, may be road salt, may be some chemical, may be uh, industrial waste mix in the groundwater and when this groundwater become unsafe for human consumption, then it is called groundwater contamination. So, groundwater contamination may include your fluoride, fluoride problem we are noticing in more than 14 states and different districts, okay. Due to increment in the concentration or the amount of the fluoride, it is impacting health, further salinity, water is becoming more and more saline, especially in northern India, you know. The RO service provider, they are charging higher, especially over the groundwater extraction rather than supplied water, the state government supplied water because the salinity level in Delhi NCR has been increased rapidly during last few years. Then iron contained the presence concentration of iron which should be less than 0.3 ppm, but it is more than 0.5 ppm in most of the state, okay. Uh, especially we are noticing such problem in Bihar, Rajasthan, 
ओके त्रिपुरा वेस्ट बंगाल एटसेट्रा देन आर्सेनिक प्रॉब्लम एस फ्लोराइड प्रॉब्लम एग्जिस्टेड इन सेवरल स्टेट ओके और इट इंक्लूड ऑल द स्टेट्स इन विच आर एन कंटेंट्स फाउंड टू बी मोर मोर देन रिक्वायर्ड सो आर्सेनिक प्रॉब्लम इज आल्सो एग्जिस्टेड इन दोज स्टेट एक्सेप्ट वेस्ट बंगाल then presence of heavy metals in more than 13 state we are founding them then nitrate nitrate concentration has been improved beyond a permissible limit okay so pollution groundwater contamination is a major threat is a major challenge for for improving health parameters in india then another question is question number 3a discuss the recent changes brought about institutional framework of agriculture in india evaluate its impact on agrarian economy so you need to discuss the recent change brought about the institutional framework so keyword here is institutional framework institutional framework what kind of institution we are developing for agriculture economic activities development so you may name at least 3 4 5 institution and you can define their role the the requirement of this question will be fulfilled okay so you can connect about this reform is necessary it works just like engine of uh, economy okay with respect to time as india is a krishi pradhan desh and more than 60% population is directly or indirectly associated with agriculture economic activities then government as well as some of the private organization non profit organization have led to development of different institution framework in india to support more and more agriculture economic activities so because after independence india was suffering international humiliation with respect to its food insecurity with respect to its food crisis so we started to evolve some of the institutional development to fulfill our requirement to make india self dependent over food production so first very important organization the most corrupt organization food corporation of india national agriculture corporating marketing federation which was established around 1965 and 1958 for price support price regulation distribution means all the procurement of the cereals especially the right to wheat some of the millets it is the work of food corporation of india okay procurement first after that distribution procurement then stories then distribution throughout the india okay then agriculture produce market committee during 1960s 70s most of the state government brought this law agriculture produce market committee act okay so were established by many state protect the interest of the farmer now farmers are bounded to sell only with an apmc mandis so apmc mandis generally the aim of apmc mandis to prevent the farmers from exploitation of intermediaries further electronic national agriculture market that was launched in 2016 it is very important to infrastructure in the field of agriculture which is providing electronic sale and purchase of the product to the farmers to the traders then you know the role of national bank for agriculture development okay agriculture and rural development nabard nabard is a refinancing institution established by government during 1982 okay so this refinancing institution providing credit to regional rural bank and different other banks especially to satiate the requirement of uh, uh agriculture and allied sector okay further for export and import you have apeda 
Apeda means Agriculture Processed Food Product Export Development Authority, which provide certification, which regulate, monitor export of agriculture commodities. Now further, question number 3b, discuss the continuing dispute on water sharing between riparian state of Northwest India. So the question is about dispute of Northwestern India, although we know uh, northern state dispute, northwest as well as southern, central, eastern, okay. So many states over different, different rivers, water sharing, they have dispute, but question is specifically demanding to discuss about northwestern states. So you need to focus here over Punjab, Haryana, Rajasthan dispute, okay. Dispute for water sharing. So here you can write that India being a land of many rivers have often become cause of dispute, especially after post green revolution when water requirement has increased then for agriculture more and more water required for industries for different other as we are you know developing growing then water demand is also growing day by day. So more and more water dispute, interstate river water dispute govern education and dispute in India and that was established for resolving the dispute but it is failed to resolve such kind of dispute. So here you need to focus, give the attention over Ravi, Bias, Satlaj river mainly between the state of Punjab and Haryana, mainly between the state of Punjab and Haryana, okay. So this uh, water dispute remain for very long time period because Satlas Yamna Link Canal project that uh, Haryana want to extend it to get water of Ravi river, but Punjab is not willing to share the water to the Haryana state. So that has become a concern of dispute. River Satlas Ravi Vyas, this is the main concern of the dispute. So here dispute started with division of Punjab earlier, Punjab and Haryana existed as one entity, okay. Then Haryana was separated in 1966 from the Punjab. Then Haryana started for continuous work over Satlaj Yamna link canal, which farmer of Punjab are not stand, uh, interested or not ready to share the water, to share the water to farmers of Haryana. So you need to, you know, discuss more about Satlaj Yamna link canal over dispute between uh, Punjab, Haryana as well as this also include Rajasthan, this dispute also include Rajasthan. So you can define that. Now question number 3c, it is about soil of India are clear reflection of structure and process. Soil that exists in India, how they are clearly reflection of the structure, structure of the soil generally presence of different sand, silt, clay, particles, okay, uh, porosity, non-porosity of the soil as well as uh, the process. Soil development evolution in India, how it is reflection of the soil structure and soil process. So here you can give uh, introduction about, uh, about the soil, about the uh, soil structure, soil profile, all are suitable, there is no problem. So if we define the soil structure, then soil structure describe the way of sand, silt, clay particles, they clump together. Then we consider one type of, one type of soil structure. So soil structure is important for plant growth, it is important for regulating the movement of air, water influencing the root development, affecting the nutrients availability, etc. Okay, so maximum thing you can say the fertility of the soil, okay, 
the sterile condition of the soil all dependent on the soil structure so soil in india are reflection of soil structure as well as process good quality soil are friable okay poor soil structure has coarse coarse grain means good quality of soil is more finer particle consist little bit more finer particles while poor quality of soil consist more bigger larger particles further permeability permeability means which uh, allow to pass liquid gases through the rocks through the layers through the particles of the soil then it is good it depend on sage sai particles etc then porosity porosity means holding the water capacity by the soil okay so all such things are important for keeping fertility of the soil intact now india is bestowed india is bestowed with rich mineral resources due to global geological structure india is bestowed with rich mineral resources means in india the rich mineral resources are due to the geological structure of india okay correlate the above statement with large mineral belt of india correlate the above statement with large mineral belt of india so mineral belt of india himalayan belt central belt uh, northwestern western or uh, southern south west belt as well as northeast central belt etc etc you need to define different different major mineral belts that existed within india so mineral you know that it is aggregation of two or more than elements it has defined chemical structure physical properties organic inorganic process etc etc that existed over the earth crust so india india is endowed with rich variety of mineral resources and uh, in several belt in peninsular india as well as in northern india we have different belt okay just like himalayan belt consist all such kind of minerals may be associated with coal may be associated with different hydrocarbons gases etc they are found within the himalayan belt okay then countries 93% of iron production 84% coal production found in northeastern belt Uh, north eastern mineral belt especially here chota nagpur plateau the odisha plateau the region of chatisgarh jharkhand odisha and uh, little bit part of west bengal so this region is very rich very rich in iron ore production and coal production as well further north western belt north western belt generally include the state of rajasthan and gujarat aravalli so generally here you find uranium okay aquamarine petroleum mica etc gypsum all such minerals are found over there then your western belt central belt andhra pradesh chatisgarh madhya pradesh bauxite uranium manganese limestone mica etc these are existed within the central belt now bauxite and ferrous minerals found in southern belt so you need to define different different uh, mineral belts in india that existed okay now next question is about discuss the importance of dryland farming in drought prone area so dryland farming is a technique of farming when you conserve more and more water and you reduce the evaporation of water from the soil generally dryland farming is practice where rainfall is less than 75 cm in the state of rajasthan and the state of uh, you know interior part of maharashtra telangana little bit andhra pradesh karnataka so this region is water stressed region 
so you can follow these techniques timely sowing seeds when enough moisture existed within the soil okay so farmers need to recognize what is the right time to sow the crop so that they need not to irrigate the land before sowing the crop okay so naturally if moisture existed then they can sow the crop then mulching okay mulching means covering paving the land with some of the uh, leaves some of uh, straw etc etc all such waste product material we need to cover so that it can prevent the moisture of the soil then weed control okay we decide shelter belt along the field shelter belt means development of the rows of trees along the side of fields so that they can prevent the effect impact of uh, harsh wind etc water harvesting at lower level field so dry land farming conducted rajasthan saurashtra region gujarat marathwara etc in this region farmers used to practice lot of dry land farming okay so generally more than 75% of farmers are in dry land farming they are a small and marginal farmers so generally they are producing such crop which are uh, which need less amount of the water okay bajra maize ragi oil seed jowar cotton 30% of total rice etc so you can define this dry land farm further question number 4c incidence of extreme rainfall incidence of extreme rainfall event and flash floods in recent time have led to devastating consequences of people living in low lying areas you need to discuss means floods which we noticed within state of kerala uttarakhand and himalayan region and uh, bihar in northeastern region so flood we noticed and uh, especially it is the nightmare it is a great hazard for those people who are living in low lying land areas means generally uh, people started to live at the river bed okay so that create the problem you can provide little bit factual data within the introduction just like according to study there have been 285 reported flood events okay from 1950 to 2017 okay this much amount of people impacted by the flood the number of extreme rainfall events have gone up three fold analysis by indian meteorological department so you can give such data then recently we noticed disaster in kerala uttarakhand these areas have multi hazardous scenario triggered by extreme event of rainfall means incessant large amount of rainfall during very short span of time okay so we notice such rainfall then severe weather events severe complex weather events cause catastrophic loss to human life to the property torrential rainfall cause flood jhelum jhelum causing nearly 400 villages in kashmir to submerge under the water chennai bore the brunt of next year and 2015 at sector you can provide little bit data here so uttarakhand yet to recover from the flood that took place in 2013 okay so this is creating more vulnerability to such section which is residing over low land areas now question number 5 which is compulsory you need to attend it it is compulsory for you you need to attempt it okay you cannot skip it discuss the impact of forest right act 2006 on the local forest community in india so forest right act 2006 which strengthen 
which is strengthen the right the claim of st sc section especially the local panchayats which provide right to monitor to regulate uh, related to forest produce okay to the gram panchayats so forest right act parliament pass it in 2006 okay especially it empower the tribal community who live around in the periphery or within these forest areas so that their livelihood their habitation their culture their custom their occupation etc etc need to be protected okay so this act recognize symbiotic relationship between scheduled tribe community as well as uh, the forest forest are necessary for the tribal community now this act encompasses right right of self cultivation and habitation which are usually regardless as individual right and community right as grazing fishing access to water bodies forest habitat right okay etc so it strengthen it strengthen the position of scheduled tribe community with respect to forest right act further enjoin gram sabha right holder responsibility of conservation protection of bio, biodiversity wildlife fauna flora etc etc that existed within the forest areas further act empowered the forest dweller to access and use the forest resources in manner they were traditionally accustomed okay so now if commercial houses need to cut these forest they require the permission of gram sabha of tribal people okay now further question number 5b can panchayati raj institution play a role in grassroots level planning in india if yes discuss okay so how panchayati raj institution after recognition provision of constitutional status after granting the constitutional status to these panchayats or local bodies how it led to strengthening the grassroots level planning so gram sabha is the basic unit of domestic system every elder citizen is the member of gram sabha who can participate here so it transfer it devolve the power from state to local region to local people so it is strengthening or achieving the objective of gandhi regarding self rule in local areas to strengthen the local people various major for democratic decentralization have been taken okay to target participatory planning this grassroots level planning people themselves prioritize their needs problem make the plan for development block village etc in order to institutionalize the people's participation we already passed 73rd 74 constitution amendment act in 1992 which provide constitutional status to these panchayats now now there is more participation in the planning there is more transparency accountability responsibility a uh, better monitoring but still there are problem lack of fund dissipation to the panchayats and municipalities which is uh, not fulfilling the objective of strengthening grassroots level planning in rural areas now next question is discuss the significance discuss the significance of new ports on western coast of india with respect to external trade in india okay so some of the western port existed in india you need to emphasize how they are strengthening the export in india these ports play a vital role in the economy of india by facilitating import by facilitating export of the goods the western coast ports are also responsible for providing employment to number of people and for increment in the export of goods from india to outside world 
it handle large volume of cargo okay passenger okay uh, especially mangalore kochi goa okay all these are ports which are handling which are handling the cargo export from india to outside world so west port port they are better suitable because western coast is submergent in nature and uh, here here we can build such port here the port are suitable for very very big or large vessels okay eastern coast is little bit emergent in nature but these ports especially at western coast okay including mumbai port bombay port so they are providing huge employment generation as well as export imports of cargo to india or outside world now how would decline in total fertility rate below replacement level so replacement level is a level of population when fertility does not lead to improvement in the overall population we are noticing from very long time period since 1990s as we noticed uh, the kerala state has already achieved its replacement level but not only kerala more than 13 state at present in india their fertility rate is around 2 2.1 2.5 or sometimes less than 2 or 2.1 so that's why this replacement level replacement level is below uh, this total fertility rate is below than the replacement level so rather than increment in the population it is leading to decrement in the population okay in many state of india so replacement level fertility is the level of fertility at which population exactly replace itself from one generation to another generation okay so replacement level fertility is the level of fertility which exactly replace itself from current generation to coming generation in developed countries replacement level of fertility can be taken requiring the average fertility around 2.1 children per woman okay but in developing country it is it it is around 2.5 uh, more than 3 etc replacement level fertility will lead to zero population growth if mortality rate remain constant same does not change if mortality rate will improve then there will be decline in the population growth if mortality rate will decrease then there will be little bit incline in the population if it will remain same then there will be no change in the population so kerala has already achieved replacement level fertility rate below replacement level since 1990s further 28 states 8 uts okay among all, all these these states have very poor fertility rate means even fertility rate is here below of all these states the fertility rate is below than the replacement level of population which will lead to decrement in the population it will lead to decrement in the population i hope this is quite clear now kalapani dispute kalapani dispute is a disputed region between india and nepal 
uh, although it existed from very old time period, but uh, especially when this government of India released a new map after uh, bifurcation of Jammu and Kashmir estate after separation of Ladakh from Jammu and Kashmir, then uh, it created more concern and estate of uh, Nepal. So, subsequently, consequently, Nepal also passed a resolution, a new map in which it claimed Kalapani region as its territory, while in India's map, India also claimed it as its own territory. So, we notice little bit reduction in the foreign relation with respect to this Kalapani disputed region. So, this Kalapani is a tri-junction between Tibet, uh, Nepal and India. Okay. So, the dispute over Kalapani which lies in easternmost corner of Uttarakhand, Pithoragarh district in Uttarakhand, uh, from here this Kali river. Okay. Kali river is flowing which generally maximum remain in the territory of Nepal. Nepal also claim this Kalapani region, the Marsi land, that it is its territory. Okay. So, in November 2019, when India publishes revised political map showing newly created union territory of Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh, then both India and Nepal lay claim over Kalapani. The map so Kalapani is part of Pithoragarh district in Uttarakhand and Nepal protest immediately to this lingering issue and in May it inaugurated, okay, pass cutting across Kalapani region for India's pilgrims to Kailas Mansarovar. So, Nepal hit back, Nepal passed its resolution in the assembly as well as uh, Nepal hit back by summoning India's ambassador over this issue. So, Kalapani, Kalapani share border with Tibet, with China, means Tibet under China, Nepal and with India. Okay. It is nearby Lipu Lake Pass, <laughs> the ancient Silk Road to China. Nepal has published a revised official map. Okay, for claiming the Kalapani region. So, it is a disputed region. Now, question number 6a, why do disparities in development income between regions persist in large countries like India? How does ADP plan addresses this problem? Okay. So, additional district program how assisted regional disparities that existed among different states, different regions in India. So, these disparities not only uh, created in modern time period, but they can be noticed uh, during colonial time period as well. When Britishers came to India, then they also created more disparities, especially they started to rehabilitate, they started to develop some trade or commercial activities, manufacturing activities, especially in region of Kolkata, Madras, Bombay, etc. So, these regional disparities existed uh, from ancient time period. Okay. So, regional development disparities further due to capitalist model due to free market economy activities, more uh, role of private players, especially in profit generating regions, it further creating more and more regional disparities, not only within India, but across the world, including in developed countries as well as developing countries. So, regional development disparities refers to difference in economic development and uneven economic achievement in different geographical regions. Per capita income of richest five state, okay, 145% higher in 2000, but 
and 2018-19 it rose by 400 percent so label of increment in the disparities uh, means around more than three times around more than three times okay so we need to prevent it otherwise it may lead to rather than social development sometimes social exploitation social destruction now regions for regional disparities what are the main regions for regional disparities how it get created so regional disparities as we notice they have originated during even british time period british government industrialized few regions like bombay calcutta and madras region for its own trading or manufacturing activities further difficult terrain that existed uh, within some of the hilly state okay in some of the regions which also cause regional disparities like in himachal pradesh kashmir uttarakhand northeastern india difficult terrain where density of population is low and there are more push factor that applicable over migrant labor okay uh, landslide more natural calamities so that is also playing its role difficult terrain and creating regional disparities then some locational advantage some locational advantage generally uh, the coastal countries uh, coastal states they have more advantage with respect to development of exclusive economic zone development of some ports development of you know economic activities rather than hinterland region so location advantage like availability of irrigation raw material market facilities etc which led to development of industries uh, especially we notice in ncr region in bangalore in Mom bombay pune region etc so due to different locational advantage new investment in private sector has generated tendency to concentrate more wealth in some regions than local need one size fits approach all such kind of planning in india uh, rather than you know removing disparities among different region created more and more disparities the benefit of green revolution was only limited to punjab haryana western up and some of other region so uh, means earlier farmer were already rich in these regions further after adoption of green revolution the label the difference between these farmers and the farmers belongs to different other region further get increased okay then insecurity problem in jammu and kashmir chhattisgarh etc they are discouraging these factors are discouraging the investors okay further social progress index and uh, human development index very poor rank of india very poor score of india so keeping development inside government of india land launched this adp program in 2018 okay so it cover five broad sector may be including health nutrition education agriculture water resources financial inclusion skill development and infrastructure so this additional development program recognize importance collecting uh, taking on challenge of solving long persisting problem now it is you know uh, almost uh, implemented by all the state additional development program so that government or district can especially emphasize the objectives which are mentioned within adp program to reduce to reduce its dependency on it now question number 6b critically examine the role of irns navy program on satellite navigation system so this program of indian regional navigation satellite system this program we desperately need during 1919 kargil war because at that time 
at the time we don't have our own satellite we were dependent on satellite of USA but USA denied access during 1999 Kargil war so during Kargil war as uh, Pakistan soldiers have advantage of uh, remaining at higher peak at higher altitude then Indian soldiers had disadvantage remaining in low lying areas at uh, lower region so they were unable to target target the bunkers of Pakistan army because they were uh, you know by imagination without any scientific calculation without any kind of uh, uh, satellite navigation etc they were unable to find the exact location of the bunker while pakistani soldier or army were able to effectively target indian bunkers or indian soldiers because they were getting advantage of higher altitude in that region okay so due to getting advantage of higher altitude they were targeting giving befitting response to indian soldier but indian soldier were unable to target them because of higher altitude so at the time we ask permission we ask more support from usa but usa uh, did not allow us have to have accessibility over over its satellite then India developed its own Indian regional navigation satellite, independent regional nav navigation satellites and which have coverage over 1500 kilometer. So during war, during any kind of such calamities, events, etc. With the help of satellite, we can precisely target, uh, we can precisely locate our target. So this IRNS not only provides the service to India as well as it can provide to all our South Asian neighbor countries. Some of the application of Indian regional navigation system, terrestrial radiation, uh, aerial marine navigation, disaster management, vehicle tracking, okay, integrated with mobile phone, precise timing, mapping, okay, how we locate particular vehicle of military, etc with the help of satellite okay terrestrial navigation high visual voice navigation etc so all these are the features which will assist not only india but its neighbor countries as well they can get the benefit from satellite of india now question number 6c examine the role of high population concentration in india slum making them more vulnerable during pandemic conditions during covid 19 during covid 19 we notice high vulnerability of these slum especially in mumbai dharavi region okay a uh, huge slum of india so india has been highly susceptible to spread the pandemic disease in such slum area because these slum have very poor water facilities sanitation facilities okay uh, they have poor air polluted air plus they have inaccessibility to solar light and in very small room lot of people all the family member live together especially we notice such kind of phenomena within mumbai so it further led to susceptibility of covid virus spreading the covid virus rapidly okay in this region so slum constitute 17 percent of urban household in india mumbai itself make 42 percent household for the slums slum and mumbai extremely crowded okay uh, lack of necessary facilities uh, toilet facilities clean water facilities okay so they were more susceptible to covid 19 outbreak and we notice more and more containment zone containment zone within the city okay finally we did not receive such data that how many people get impacted from municipal corporation from government of maharashtra but uh, we can analyze that 
how these cells were vulnerable by identifying the containment zone 490 containment zone or more were created during 2020 covid program so here you can get the idea about the containment zone so red containment zone they were epicenter orange containment zone okay so here here you are noticing how these slums were vulnerable regarding spreading the covid 19 so slum have number of disadvantages due to this this covid 19 prevention became very critical in slums so we need to rethink rebuild all these slums to increase their living conditions to reduce uh, overcrowd in these slums further we need to ensure clean water good toilet facilities we need to ensure a uh, reconstruction redevelopment of all such basic necessity requirement that people want otherwise these slums are more susceptible for different kind of disease especially uh, the flu disease which is spread from one person uh, from the contact of one person or animal to another person now question number 7a discuss the salient feature of industrial complex in western india examine the impact of special economic zone policy on the region so industrial complex region industrial complex region you have noticed in different different uh, regions in india because of some factors so several industrial region just like mumbai pune bangalore tamil nadu okay hogle region kolkata ahmedabad uh, chhota nagpur region guntur uh, gurgaon delhi meerut region etc so all these are the industrial regions all these are industrial region okay you can draw very rough diagram you can look it so special uh, economic zone are delimiting geographical areas located uh, especially in border areas especially in some areas to promote the economic activities generally in special economic zone rules and regulation with respect to conduction of business are more liberal uh, with respect to other areas so some of the laws which are not applicable in all these exclusive economic zone so exclusive economic zone not only supporting rapid investment generally most of the country develop these exclusive economic zone for attraction of more and more investment in their country and development of more and more goods and services within the country so these exclusive economic zone generally located uh, in the border areas towards the coastal region where government provide single window clearance government uplifted even some tax norms and government support more and more economic activities so that it can lead to development of a model economic model for rapid growth of the country okay so these uh, exclusive economic zone affecting had several impact over different industrial economic region in india but their location can further be improved now question number 7b we are going to close within 10 minute okay still 3 and 1 4 5 questions are total here so we will try to cover one question within 2 minute now discuss the emergence of linguistic regional and state in india this problem existed from very old time period linguistic regions linguistic state so linguistic state generally demanded by the people to recognize to give more importance to their language or sometimes the minority group feel isolated from the main stream 
or sometimes the language of mainstream become dominant, then uh, the isolated or minority group want to either recognize its uh, uh, language or want to have separate identity with uh, from the mainstream. Okay. So, India a multilingual country have huge biodiversity, okay, linguistic diversity, huge linguistic diversities. So, here it creates some kind of isolation to some kind of isolation especially to minority, okay. Then economic backwardness, uneven development, they further they further strengthen their demand, they further strengthen the demand for creation of separate identity, separate region or separate state. Okay. So, on linguistic line, they demanded their separate region, separate state. Further, we have noticed historically, okay, historically, uh, in case of Odisha, in case of different other state, and government of India after independence created for several commissions to satiate the linguistic demand of different regions. Just like in case of Odisha, we can say that during British time period, uh, Odias they were feeling neglected among Bengalis, Telugu, Hindi speaking people. So, they were feeling more isolated, marginalized section of society. So, they demanded to have a separate region, Odia region. Okay, so in 1936, they demanded for formation of new state Odisha. Okay, this led to creation of formation of new state Odisha. Further, after independence, you know, government of India appointed first Dhar Commission 1948. After that, JBP committee means Jawaharlal Nehru, Vallabhai, and uh, Vallabhai. Uh, uh, and Pattavi Sita Ramaya, all these people themselves check the feasibility whether a state can be created on linguistic basis or not. Finally, we notice creation of Andhra Pradesh, uh, this demand uh, because Andhra Pradesh people, the Telugu speaking people, somewhere they feel isolated, neglected themselves from. Tamil speaking people in Madras region. So, they created their own separate demand for creation of the state. Okay, so this Potti Sri Ramlu, he was the Gandhian, staunch Gandhian follower. He led agitation, hunger strike for more than 56 days. After his death, finally, we created, finally, government of India recognized creation of linguistic based state. So, at the time, uh, at the time, this Andhra Pradesh was separated from Madras. Finally, latest means uh, the very old demand of 1950s finally met in 2014 by creation of separate by creation of separate Telangana from the Andhra Pradesh. Okay. Now, question number 7c, question number 7c, what are the drivers of urban sprawl around the major cities of the country? How have new investment in transport projects supported sprawl development? So, urban sprawl, urban sprawl. So, urban sprawl means extension of urban areas, extension of urban areas especially due to transportation facilities, especially due to rapid development. Urban sprawl is defined as the spreading of urban development, development of the city, unrestricted growth in many urban areas of housing, commercial development, roads, large expenses, new investment in transport, project support. Urban sprawl, urban sprawl. The rapid expansion of geographical extension of cities, town, often characterized by low density residents of the housing, 
single use zoning sprawl is caused in part by need accommodation a rising urban population however in many metropolitans politician it result in formation of desire increasing living space uh, where residents want more and more space as well as more and more better clean environment good facilities and uh, less crowded area so they started to extend themselves from from core areas further transportation development uh, uh, development of roads some of the infrastructure further facilitate or intensify further intensify urban sprawl now question number 8a how do agro climatic and land capability indicators assist in mag macro agriculture regionalization in india illustrate with the appropriate map so you need to mention or the 13 13 agriculture zone that separated that created based on different uh, micro analysis okay for for the development of the farmers or the agriculture field so regionalization for for optimizing agriculture productivity for increment in the income of the farmer for generating more and more employment especially in agriculture as well as agriculture allied activities and to make judicial use of available irrigation water facilities or to make judicious utilization of different other infrastructure development project okay to reduce regional inequality we have created or from time to time different commission as well as different organization they have created india they have divided india into different different agro climatic zone okay to achieve such objective so mitra in 1977 divided country into several seven natural regions based on different physiography associated with nature resources associated with natural phenomena okay further majorly we recognize at present okay we are lacking time here so i want to just show you the diagram that agro climatic zone majorly we are noticing here the 13 agro climatic zone 13 to 15 okay so here agro climatic zone 1 2 3 4 etc etc 13 14 okay so or 15 further may be including island or portion so we have created to achieve more employment to achieve more production to utilize better our infrastructure as well as to increase farm income and to plan specifically based on different agro climatic regions question number 8b discuss the geopolitical significance of quad quad is group of four countries and four countries after uh you know great destruction by the tsunami in 2004 which led to submergence of all the coastal region especially the southern india or uh, or the andaman nicobar at the time in 2004 when you know there was a great destruction notice then quad emerges to to provide some of the solution related to maritime security related to regional development related to trade development so post post tsunami four countries india usa australia japan okay so these four countries started to join hand together for achieving maritime security trade better health standard and more and more import and export okay so if we notice about importance of indo pacific region then more than 40% of the world export more than 38% of the world import passes through passes through indian ocean or the pacific ocean okay through this region in 2019 
you know USA did trade of this much amount. Further, Australia, India, okay, they already joined hand together, especially to prevent the impact, influence of China and in Indo-Pacific region. Okay, so India and China, uh, India and Japan have clashed with China regarding their territorial dispute. So it automatically bring uh, them together, uh, especially during the time period of Shinzo Abe. India come closer to Japan. Okay, because because of influence of China in Indo-Pacific region, and because of dispute over Senkaku Island. Okay. And uh, because of dispute in Aksai Chin region and uh, Doklam Plateau, etc., etc. So, China government has hit further several Australian industries because Australia criticizes China's, China's responsibility, accountability towards spread of COVID 19. And some of the industries, you know, facing the brunt of Chinese aggression in Australia. China has increased the tariff, China has increased the tariff over some of the product that come from Australia, especially the wine product, some uh, cereal, barley product, etc, etc. Okay. So, United States, India, Japan, all these states have joined hand together. Now, this question you need to you know, answer with respect to maritime trade, especially your attention should be on maritime trade rather than something else. Then further, uh, this is the last and final question, evaluate the role of National Food Security Act and providing access to food to the poor in India. So, National Food Security Act, this was passed in 2013 by government of India or by the parliament. Especially, it assisted the food security in the country. You can consider this is the world largest program regarding food security. Okay, so in 2013, National Food Security Act was passed by the parliament and uh, it decided that 75 percent of the rural population and more than 50 percent of the urban population will be covered by this, uh, this program. Okay. The eligible person will be entitled to receive 5 kg, 5 kg of rice, wheat, coarse grain, etc. per month, while Antatoya Anna Yojana means poorest of the poor person will receive 35 kilogram of uh, rice, wheat or coarse grain at cheaper price with respect to 3, 2 or 1 rupees respectively, 3 rupees per kg rice. 2 rupees per kg wheat and 1 rupees per kg coarse grain including millets etc. Further, this act not only strengthen provide security, food security in rural and urban area, it also led to strengthening, uh, strengthening the women as well as children, nutrition and their empowerment. Further, this act also specified focus of nutrition support to the women to the children. So, it provide to pregnant women as well as lactating mothers assistance of worth rupees 6000 and uh, three different installment okay uh, before pregnant uh, at the time of pregnancy during uh, delivery and after post natal means after the birth of the child children up to the 14 years of age entitled to uh, midday meal scheme etc. So, this is all already supported by this National Food Security Act of 2013. Further, Act also contained provision setting up grievances redressal mechanism and provided several provisions to strengthen the transparency and food delivering etc. So, we can conclude that National Food Security Act as the world largest program, although there are problem of the leakage, but still satiate uh, the requirement of hunger, the requirement of food throughout or across the India. So, this was the last question. We noticed that most of the question and uh, this geography optional paper too.
are more associated with current time situation problem. Okay. So, thank you. Bye-bye. We are ending our session here.